Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Washington Football's unfiltered show, The Beat. I am your host, Chip Brier. Washington Football put up one hell of a fight against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, losing 31 to 23 in the wild card round. We had a hero rise at the quarterback position, and the defense did all they could against the GOAT, Tom Brady. So to wrap up the 2020 season for the Washington football team, we bring in this week's panel, Julie Donaldson, Senior Vice President of Media and Content for the Washington football team, Jason Campbell, former Washington football team quarterback from 2005 to 2009, and making his first appearance, John Kime, ESPN NFL Nation reporter covering the Washington football team beat panel it was a great year even though it was a seven and nine record there were highs there were lows there were special moments and then there were some difficult decisions made so let's begin with the 2020 season rewind with what we saw in that playoff loss what can there you know what did you take away from that that really encapsulated the season that we got to witness you know, I think what you saw there first off is, is nobody thought this team was going to be in that situation. Uh, I think everybody thought when coach said we have the opportunity to win the division, we have a chance to win the division. We all sat back and said, you're a little bit crazy. Uh, but there they were, resiliency throughout the entire season, going through COVID, with coach dealing with cancer, with Alex Smith fighting back, dealing with the shuffle at quarterback, with a guy who was on the street taking classes at ODU having to lead this team. They were in it until the end. I think resiliency is, is really the best way to kind of wrap up the season. Yeah, I say for me, it's just uh, perseverance. Uh, you know, this team had to go through a lot. Uh, you know, you get knocked down, you have to get back up and keep playing. Uh, you know, they kind of started a playoff season really like four weeks ago, um, you know, because every game counted towards the end. You know, you wait and see what the Giants do, what Dallas do, and then what Philly kind of knocked themselves out of it. So, you know, it's kind of like a back and forth, just a yo-yo. And then to be able to mentally challenge all that, and uh, then still find yourself into the playoffs. I think it does a lot for a young football team. Uh, it gives a, a young football team a lot of confidence. I think you found some leaders, uh, no matter if you're a first round draft pick or no matter if you're a, you know, a big time free agent. And then you look at Chase Young, a guy that was given a captain, uh, uh, you know, towards the end of the year. Like that means a lot for a guy that can run up and down the sideline, that energetic, doesn't hardly sit down. That does something for a young football team. He brought a lot of energy, and I think, you know, Coach Rivera kind of found that in, in him. And I think I think I'll, I'll kind of play off what both you guys said, but, you know, Julia, you took my word, resiliency, so I'll just say mindset too. And I think this year was a lot about a foundation being laid. Whether or not you get to the playoffs or not, you know, some of that was controlled by the fact that the division was down. Seven and nine is still, a, for where they were at, is still a, is a good progression for them. And I think that foundation was laid. And I think it comes back to that word resiliency mindset. A lot of young talent, you saw the energy because of that youth, because of guys like Chase Young. I think what we also on that playoff game is it was a good chance for them to measure how far do you have to go to then take that next step? What comes after that? What did you see in that game that said, okay, what, what else do you need to beat a team like Tampa Bay in the playoff? Because ultimately, as Ron Rivera said, in his season ending press conference with us is that the Super Bowl is the goal, not just getting there, it's it's continuing to build on that. So what you saw in that game was really, you know, they 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 fought their way back in that game and somehow they stuck they stuck around for longer than I think people would have expected. But to take that next step, what are the lessons you learned from that game that you can use moving forward? And I think so that why that's why that game was so crucial because it did give them a chance to measure where they had come, but also where do you need to, how do you need to take that next step? A lot of people are gonna say that playoff game was the highlight of the 2020 season. Let's see what you guys have for your highlights from what we got to witness. John, I wanna start with you. What was your highlight of the season? Um, boy, I don't know that I've thought about in, in that terms. I think, I, I don't know if there's one highlight. I think for them, the highlight probably was that Pittsburgh win. Because I think that was, you know, we were coming off a game where they felt like they finally got some momentum beating Dallas. But to go win at Pittsburgh, coming back from 17 down and not playing well in the first half, and, you know, doing everything in a game that you would say, that's going to lead to a loss. And then coming back against a good team. Now, Pittsburgh struggled down the stretch. 
they had won 11 in a row at that point. This team was not a really considered a good team going into that game, right? So I think to me, that's where you really saw a lot of where I think they had taken that step. Because I felt like going into this year, they would struggle early. And then the second half was the key. What do you do in the second half of the year? And I think that was part of that second half. And I think we saw a lot of qualities that they wanted to exhibit in that win. Yeah, a lot of people like to think that the Steelers were broken by the Washington football team. They ended up losing four games after three more games after that loss to right. Washington. Julie, what was your highlight of the 2020 season? You know, it's it, it's really kind of hard to to pick one moment um, or one game or, or one player or one storyline because there's just so many that I think go into making this season something yeah. that's so special. Um, but I would kind of say overall, seeing how you know the culture of this. You know, Ron Rivera came in with very clear messages. I want to establish a winning culture. And that's why he made a lot of the decisions early on is to say, I want these guys to be in a situation where they're aware of what it means, what that play means and what it's going to take in order to make that successful. Um, there's a lot of stuff off the field that we had to deal with as well. So it's hard to kind of pick that one moment, that one game. But I love the fact that because of all of that, too, this team in bright, you know, bright lights, like, you know, to John's point against the Steelers, um, against the Cowboys on Thanksgiving Day. These are games that this team in the past wouldn't win because they didn't have that winning culture. They didn't have that um, ability to come together. And instead, they'd falter in those games. And when there was a primetime game, you just said, oh, Forget it, Washington doesn't have a shot. And this team proved that they do have that and they are building towards that. Don't forget about that Eagles game that clinched the NFC East division title. That was also a primetime game on Sunday Night Football. And Chip, if I could add one more thing to what my point about that Seals game, I think the biggest highlight involved in that game and the Dallas game was watching Alex Smith do what he did. And yeah. I think that to me is like one of the highlights of this year, watching him come back from what he did and then leading a couple wins um, and having a front row seat to that. So I just want to make sure I had that because I think that was a key part, to, it's certainly a big part to this season. I mean, if you ask me one moment that stands out more than any, it's when he went into that game against the Rams. It's raining, it's cold, and I'm just sitting here going like, this is happening. Wow, to call that moment was really, really special. Now he got smashed afterwards, and we're all thinking like, no, this is a terrible idea. We're all but... Liz Smith in that moment. <gasps> The main game, I'm going to go back to the first game of the season. You know, you fall down 17-0 to to the Philadelphia Eagles. You could have easily as just said, like, dang, no, here we go again. Same old, same old, just mm -hmm. a different year. But instead, those guys fought back. They came back in the second half. They won that football game. And from that standpoint on, you saw, you saw where this team started to show that resilience. You started to see where Coach Rivera had gone through with cancer all offseason and and everything that you can see that kind of biting into this football team and, and that fight and that urge not to give up. And you see in, in the Pittsburgh game, they was down 14 to zero. So if they didn't come back in that first game against Philly down 17 to zero, who knows if they would have had that same resilience when they got in some of these other bigger games where they fell down earlier. I know this panel wants to talk about the quarterbacks. We're going to save that for the next segment. Instead, go to which player surprised you the most in 2020? Jason, start it off. Oh, the most. Uh, I'd probably go with Sims, uh, Cam Sims, the receiver. Um, it's just, it's hard between him and Logan Thomas because I know Logan Thomas was signed and, uh, you know, everyone was saying, oh, he's not a blocking tight end. You know, he's, he has athleticism coming out as a quarterback in college. Uh, you know, I know he was, you know, with Arizona, but he got released. So you think about what Logan Thomas did this year from a receiving standpoint, like, he really evolved. I think he really evolved. I think he still has a ways to go from a physical standpoint as far as being a full-time blocking tight end, but he can build off of this season in a lot of ways. You think about Cam Sims, you know, this guy, you know, he came on as the number two receiver for this football team. Um, you know, and I think, you know, he still has some room to grow, but, you know, definitely there's some young talent on this team that they can look at and say, hey, we can build some pieces around these guys. Let's just continue to and not blow up the whole ship like Washington used to doing. If they can not do that and just build uh, with the guys that went through this season, that's how you win the next level. You go through stuff, but you stick with the guys that went through the rough stuff. So when things start to turn, they understood what that felt like and they don't go back to it. But if you get rid of those guys, you're starting over. So we'll see what happens. Um, Logan Thomas certainly has to be at the top of that list because when when they signed Logan Thomas, that you could see that there was some skill that he had in Detroit. He's got some athleticism and all that. And I think to um, Jason's point too, it felt like he became a better blocker 
as the season went on, and I think that helped, and especially in the red zone. And he did a good job in the red zone all season. He was one of the better red zone targets as a tight end in the NFL. So I think that was very surprising. Yeah, look, it, easily it would be Alex Smith, but I need to put him aside. You can't argue against Logan. You can't argue against Cam Sims getting their opportunities. But I'll go to the other side of the ball. How about Cameron Curl? Yes. He's a guy that wasn't drafted high, that was just put in on small little spots, asked to play that Buffalo nickel position, and then Landon Collins goes down, and they say, okay, we're not going to go get that big free agent that we thought we were going to get. It's going to be your job, rookie, to do it. And now I believe he's he's going to be that guy vying for that starter spot right there with Collins, and he just may have a little bit of an edge. He shows he's aggressive, he's smart, he's got instincts, um, and you know he really made the most of that opportunity. Yeah, his body of work speaks for itself. I just need names here for offensive and defensive MVPs. We'll go Julie, Jason, John. I Alex Smith for offensive MVP. Um, defensive MVP, it's got to be right there. The opposite end of the spectrum, Chase Young, the young guy drafted number two overall. Seeing him come in and, and the performance he put on the field, but more than that, the leader that he became as well. Yeah, uh, I pretty much have to echo what she said, uh, you know, offensively, you know, how can you not go with Alex? Uh, you know, he had to fight through and come through. Um, you know, if I had to go outside of Alex, uh, you know, it's it's just hard because all the other positions are so interchangeable. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm going to stick with Alex. And then if I go defensively, like I said, I like Chase Young, but I also like Montez Sweat, what he yeah. did this year. You know, Montez, I thought, had a great, great year this year. You know, the guy caused a lot of turnovers and uh, did a lot of great things. You know, I would just say from a just an overall standpoint, man, just a, a year for everybody. I agree with what Jason said about Montez Sweat. I think it's he gets overlooked a little bit in the Chase Young discussion, but I'm still going to go Chase Young because I think of all the, the intangibles that he also added in addition to the play on the field. Montez was was a beast on the field as well, and I think they're really they're obviously set there. I think the way Chase Young became a captain organically, I think is it separated him as far as like okay, who are you going to get offensively? Yeah, I mean I you know it's funny because I was thinking about Alex Smith and like he only he started six games. It's it's hard to say okay over six games. I think if if you go another option, I'm going Terry McLaurin because there was not a lot around him and he still produced. He's over a thousand yards in a season where he played with what four quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And you look at his first two seasons, what he's produced given the quarterback play and it, that it's what could he have done if there was more consistent and better quarterback play and down the stretch he was hurt and you saw how it impacted the offense and so i, I think you know if there's a if, if you go alex smith i think he's got to be a very tight one b there yeah we got to hit the break we come right back with what's next and the storylines we're watching in the offseason you're watching the beat keep it locked we all know things are different keeping you safe is not at Innova, we ensure the safety of everyone who comes to us with safe locations, safe supplies, safe cleaning, and safe practices. You're safe at Innova. Get the facts at innova.org slash safety. Let's make a splash. Play the DC Lottery's Roaring Cash. Free health care. Hundreds to more than $1,000 per month in disability compensation and tens of thousands for college tuition. These are just some of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs benefits that may be available to veterans. VA is focused on customer service like never before. Choose VA and see why veterans' trust in VA reached an all-time high. Claim the benefits you've earned at choose.va.gov. DC has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. DC's greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94.7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. 
Welcome back to The Beat. I'm your host, Chip Rier. We've got Julie Donaldson, Jason Campbell, and John Kahn still with us in the second segment of the show. What's next for the Washington football team? That is where the discussion heads now. So let's begin with which free agent should the team make a top priority in trying to sign or re-sign this offseason? Julie, I want to start with you here. <laughs> I was like, go to John, please. <laughs> no. Go ahead, Julie. <laughs> Well, look, I think the, 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 the biggest one's the big elephant in the room, and that's going to be Brandon Sheriff. What are you going to do with him? You know, I just had a conversation with Coach on it, and I said, hey, you, you love the accolades that he got, you know, being voted first team all pro, which this franchise has not had since 1996, by the way. Um, you know, being named to the Pro Bowl, being named a captain. And then it puts you in a little bit of a pickle because that means he's going to be really pricey. Um, yes. I think that's going to be the big question in the offseason is what do they do and what price in order to keep him? Yeah, but Brandon Sheriff said in his exit interview, he loves it here. He wants to be here. That has to be great for the front office to hear. Jason, what are you thinking here? Yeah, like she said, number one, you got to get Sheriff back. Uh, like I said, football is built from the inside out. You know, I, everyone likes to get these Lamborghinis and sports cars on the outside. And yeah, yeah they look good. They look fancy. <laughs> but, you know, you can't win the big games when it's cold outside. You're in playoffs unless you got that beef up front. So, you know, for me, it's, he's number one. And then number two, yes, you probably can go get like a Marvin Jones, you know, from Detroit in the free agency to be that number two receiver. I like Cam Sims, but you also need a veteran in that, in that room. And uh, he's a guy that's played a long time, has a great pedigree. So, you know, he would be a great signing in addition uh, to this team. And I think you look for another tight end as well in free agency. If you can't, then you go to the draft. There's plenty in the draft. So we've heard offensive lineman. We've heard wide receiver. Now quarterback is another position potentially of need. So, John, let's go to that question for you. What position is the biggest need for Washington going into the offseason through the draft and through free agency? Quarterback. <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> that, that's really easy because they, they – they do not have a guy on the roster right now where you can say definitively he's our guy going forward. There are questions with everybody. You know, Taylor Heineke was fun to watch, but yeah. dur durability concerns. And, and you just mm -hmm. don't go from, you know, you don't take that. You're, you're not out of the league for two years, come back for a quarter, five quarters, and then say, hey, he's now our guy. What he mm -hmm. did is he what he did is secured a, a spot, at least for a training camp, place to contend for a roster spot and then whatever we'll see but he played himself into a really good spot but you can't say he's now the guy moving forward alex smith has to decide does he want to play and they have to decide if he does want to play what is is he the guy they want moving forward because can he last 16 or 17 games however many is going to be on the schedule next year and if so what's the effectiveness does that injury toward the end of the year does it give him some pause um kyle allen looks at it you know good can he be a good backup and is he a bridge guy or not i know ron rivera is high on him as far as a guy that could have done what alex had done for them the hard part is who is that guy everybody it's easy to say go get them but how and who and what cost is it in the draft well you're picking 19 that's going to be difficult for agency we don't know until all these coaching vacancies are filled who's going to really be available but that is the prior that is the position that you have to get solved um going forward so we're all in agreement here quarterback the most important position of need in this offseason yes. i see not so i think we're all in agreement there quarterback it's going to be a tough ask a lot of quarterbacks in the draft but at 19 could be slim pickings at that point but we move on because the 2021 season schedule is not official but we know who the opponents are they've got three division winners four playoff teams and of course the home and aways in the division so looking at it right now panel do we see washington football going 500 or above in the 2021 season let's start with jason here that's tough because you're the division winner. That means you get the hardest schedule in the division. And, uh, you know, looking at that schedule next year, there's a lot of playoff teams that's on there. So for me, yes, if you can secure the quarterback position with a veteran quarterback this offseason, then I say Washington can go above 500. Uh, if you're going in with a rookie or a young guy, you know, expect some struggles. And uh, that's going to be my answer. That's how I would leave it because that's usually how it goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's simple but effective, Julie. 
Yeah, I agree. You know, um, I, I think to run this offense, we saw that you need a quarterback that understands it, that knows where to go with it, um, that can really kind of help guide it. And if you're starting all over with a rookie, um, probably not. You go get yourself a, a, a guy that can run this offense efficiently, then yeah, we're, we're going to be over 500. Plus, I, this is again, this is where I have to play a little bit of that role of a homer. I don't want to be calling a bunch <laughs> of losing games. <laughs> so I'm If it going helps, to. I'm a homer with you, Julie. I think they're going to finish above 500 where that number finishes uh that could be determined later on john where are you at i mean i think it's until we know who is the quarterback until we know what else have they done then it's really hard to say because that next step is so dependent on that position but also what other what other talent do they get you know what who else, who's going to play receiver alongside mclaurin is mm -hmm. it do they get another tight end what, what do they do with the line do they keep brandon share you know, do they add somebody in the secondary that, that they probably need? So you like the foundation being that was laid, but to take that next step, you've got to get that solved. And not like I said, I'm going to assume that they at least bring in someone who's a quality starter that can do some things, or you bolster enough around there to take at least another win or two, put another win or two on that record. Yeah, this is all just premature fun conversation to what John said. We don't know anything yet until they actually play football next season. Julie Donaldson, Senior Vice President of Media and Content for the Washington football team. Jason Campbell, former Washington football team quarterback. And John Keim, ESPN NFL Nation reporter covering the Washington football team. Beat. Thank you, panel, for being with us. Thank you, viewers, for being along for the whole ride this season. We've got a lot more coming in the off season, so don't stay away too long. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Don't let the comfort fool you. Don't let the attention to detail lead you to believe that a Honda is a delicate machine. <laughs> You'd be wrong. Underneath every surface that carries a Honda badge, there has always been the capacity to amaze. From the core of everything we have ever built, all the way to the top of where you want to go. Rise to the challenge with the rugged performance of the Honda Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. Our new house is amazing. Great street, huge yard. There is a bit of an issue with our neighbor's fencing. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Which helps us save even more. Hey, Sarah, hey, Peter. Push it. Ah. What? I'm down. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. It's 2020. Let's make a splash. Play the DC Lottery's Roaring Cash. At Inova, COVID-19 testing of all patients having a procedure or surgery, continuous training of our team members, and thorough cleaning of our facilities are just some of the many ways we work to keep you safe. You're safe at Inova. D.C. has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. D.C.'s greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94.7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive.